There are times as bass anglers when we run across dirty water. Well, to be successful, we have to look at the positive side of fishing conditions like this. There are so many times throughout the season when we get to the lake, get to the river, and we're like, oh man, the water is dirty, it's stained, it's not what I was expecting. Um, I remember a time I went to Wisconsin a couple years ago, and I pulled up to the lake, and it was naturally dirty all the time, and there's a huge algae bloom going on. I just about put the boat on the trailer and tried to find another lake, but I thought to myself, you know what? This is a good thing because you know where the fish are going to be. Now, before we break down the specifics of fishing dirty water, we need to think about two things. Is the lake or river that you're fishing dirty or muddy most of the time or all the time? Or is it only muddy because of runoff? Those are two very different situations and the bass will act differently in each one. If you're fishing an area where the water is muddy or has a heavy stain to it all the time, the bass are used to it, it's not gonna throw them into some strange funk where they're, they're not gonna hit. Now, if you're fishing normally like a clear water river or a clear lake and you've got some real heavy runoff coming into it, that's a different situation. Those bass that are normally sight feeders do not like this thick mud coming in. For example, if you take a look here on the Mississippi River, a few years ago I was fishing this particular section and I was actually right there at the mouth of a tributary when a storm surge came through, just whoosh, just this big glob of muddy water. Well, this part of the Mississippi, especially in the northern sections, the water's got some decent visibility to it. Where over the next day, the mud just wiped through this area, turned the fish off until we located this piece right here, this clearer water pocket where the current moved around it. And then the fish were just stacked in here, not only largemouth, but all kinds of pike as well. So if you're fishing a river or lake system, that has some runoff, extreme runoff, you're gonna to wanna to try to find the clearest water that you can. But if you're in a situation like this where the water is dirty and muddy most of the time, you're in really good shape because you know where the fish are gonna be. Think about it this way. Let's say you're at home and the power goes out. It's the middle of the night, power goes out, instantly dark. What is the first thing that most of us do? you put a hand out and try to locate a hard structure, a hard surface, find the wall, right? The bass in this situation do the same thing. They live in this all the time, but they want to get up against some sort of hard surface, hard structure, find the bank. So that's a good thing as a bass angler because we know that they're going to be shallow even in the just blazing heat of the summer those fish are going to be up shallow so you just eliminated so much water so that is an excellent thing there's some bass anglers in the professional circuits that have literally made their careers fishing dirty water. Everybody else is trying to run to the lower end of the reservoir, find some cleaner water. They'll run up the rivers and they've got it to themselves because so many people don't like the fish in the dirty, muddy water, and they know where the fish are gonna be, that they're going to be shallow. So those are all really good situations. Now right here, I've got some really thick pads. Okay, I've got a variety of lures that I could throw through here. I could be using, you know, frogs. I've got on a quarter ounce black blue jig in this situation, and I'm just hitting these little pockets up shallow giving it a pop or two, and then I'm coming right back out of it. Some of my other favorite types of cover to fish when you've got a dirty water situation like this is I love dock pilings or I love the, the pier, the steel piers that people will put in to stop erosion. The bass love to get up tight to that type of cover. And those are really, really excellent sources. Rocks, riprap, all of those types of hard structure, hard cover are going to be great choices when it comes to fishing dirty 
and muddy water. Now as far as lure colors, this is where your solid colors, your blacks, your black blues, your, your solid blues, those types of lures do an excellent job because they offer a solid profile in that situation and it's easier for them to go ahead and pick it up. I also like to have trailers on in this situation that offer maximum vibration. They're bulky and the bass can use its lateral line to go ahead and pick up where that lure is and then with that solid color profile so they sense it and then they can zone in on it from there. Another huge benefit of fishing in muddy water or dirty water is look how close I can get to the cover. I don't have to make these super far casts, you know, like I would in a clear water lake or river. I can just get right up here tight and know that the fish are going to be there. They're going to be up shallow and I can go ahead and get right on top of them. As far as line, braid all the way. Definitely is what I'm doing in this type of a situation. Now, as far as your casting accuracy, when you've got dirty water and muddy water, the strike zone of the fish is not very big. It's gonna be pretty short. So they aren't gonna chase it all of that far. So if you see a really good piece of cover sitting in the water, you're working down a dock, make sure that you hit all sides of it and hit it just every few inches. Drop one in there, pop it move it over, drop it to the next one, pop it. You want to cover as much as that of that cover as you can. Now, what about lure selection? So if I'm fishing a dirty water situation, you know, heavily stained water, if the cover is fairly sparse, um, I'm probably going to use some moving lures like your square bills, your spinner baits, those types of things. But if I'm fishing down a shoreline that has lots of cover to it and there's just so many places those fish can go that is when i'm probably going with your jigs um, i could be using your hollow body frogs uh, texas rig plastics any of those types of things as far as jig fishing why don't you go ahead and check out this video here on eight different tips that can really take your jig fishing to the next level and hey don't forget to go out and encourage someone today you never know how you might just change their life for the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.